So in the last video, how'd you guys like that dually swapped excursion? This thing's gonna be absolutely sick when it's done. Excuse the train coming. But the reason why this project is going so slow and here and there and all of that, pretty much we are trying to do this as cheap as possible. I bought this thing for 1200 bucks. We already obtained a free dually axle. Um, we've obtained a 6.4 power stroke to go in it. And on top of that, um, I bought the thing for 1200 bucks. And there's a good V10 motor that runs strong and these things always have trouble. So here's a good V10 and a good 4R100 transmission. Figuring I could get um, 1200 bucks for both of those, we so far have an entirely free limo project. So we're gonna try and keep that rolling. We're gonna have to spend some money here and there for like the dually flares um, that are gonna get, get made for this and other stuff. But um, yeah, we're keeping that thing like as budget friendly as possible. And then a lot of you love, love, love the addition to the fleet. I can't wait to get digging on this. We'll get digging on it very, very soon. It's bright today, but um, <laughs> I think first step on this rig right here is figuring out the transmission issues, and um, we can take care of that pretty quick here, but there's a whole thing about that depending if we're gonna fully build this truck or half build this truck, because if I drop that pan, um, I might as well get a, you know, a pan with a drain plug. Um, on it already so we might be doing that as the first upgrade to this truck because if I end up fully building that truck whether I really want to do a set of compounds on it I really do I want to put a set of compounds on it and I want to personally tune it myself I can also second gen swap it and just make it mean um, nasty um, throaty do all that so I don't know which way I want to do it yet but I definitely want to put a turbo kit on it and uh, um, and build that thing um, all the way up and then another thought I had on that recently is eventually Not anytime soon, but after I go through build it all do something like I did to this truck and actually Maybe give that away to one of you. I don't know But if I said but if I put a turbo kit or anything on that truck that transmission Will not hold stock so I will have to build the 48 which is no problem <laughs> but if I fix the solenoid to just have a drive now and I don't put a deep pan with a drain plug on it it just makes a mess the second time around knowing that i'm gonna have chances are if i yeah i'm gonna blow that tranny so i'm gonna have to end up building it um hmm so i think yeah we'll just put a pan on it anyway today we're back in the 7.3 here now a lot of you have loved this build i honestly love this truck more and more um as i do random things here and there to it but as you can see on the odometer a while ago we hit a quarter million miles on this thing 275 and i've replaced about everything on this truck except the fuel spring um and i think that is where i'm having issues with this truck check this out so this is pretty much the only problem i've ever had um i replaced everything that would solve this except that fuel spring and a couple other things but it shouldn't take this long to crank and fire. And then end up killing the batteries every time. But I think it still has the stock fuel spring in it, like the OEM one that shrinks over like 100,000 cycles. And I think we're, we're, we don't have the correct fuel pressure. So I've ordered a couple things to boost the fuel pressure in this truck. And the stage two injector should get fed the fuel it should be and i think this thing will run even better perform even better and actually lay the horsepower down and there should be a notable and there should be a very noticeable difference in this truck with like a hundred dollars in parts which is pretty sick so we're gonna do that today got the jump box connected let me see if i can fire this up Plus, the throttle response just isn't there and a lot more um, where it should be. Like, it, it kind of chokes itself out. So, we should be able to fix that today.
needs her cleaning. Nice. with the fuel spring. I'm just trying to find the place with the other one. It's right there. Wow. Kind of a pain in the ass, but we'll figure it out. <sighs> Okay, everything I ordered from Riff Raff, um, and uh, let's go through it real quick. Or not, how do I? Oh boy, oh boy. High flow CVD, high flow banjo bolts, nice, nice. And then this should be the, yep, springs. And I think we got a sticker. Okay, so anyway, let me explain what we got. Here's the, um, here's pretty much the fuel pressure spring, um, return spring. Pretty much what happens is after so long, these springs just get weak. These are all different PSI. We're probably gonna put the highest in there because of the injectors. But um, what happens is these springs get weak and then it starts bleeding off PSI too, you know, too soon out of your fuel bowl. And then you go from like 60 PSI down to like 40. Um, truck will still run, but not as well. So we're gonna do that. Factory one's just probably whooped. So um, that should give us instant um, help, regardless of what I do with these. And then I also also ended up with the uh, high flow uh, CVD fittings. These um, right here, they're pretty much completely passed through. A lot of people gut these. Um, but literally for full billet ones for like no money at all. Like I said, all this stuff together was like a hundred bucks. So can't beat that. All simple mods, all simple things. Some people sit there and take the clip and uh, hollow their factory ones out. That works too. This is just a brand new piece to me. So that's why I did that. And then also you've got people also drill these out. Um, they're banjo bolts, but these are also high flow. So this will also help with our um, stage two injectors in this thing as well. But that'll give us more fuel. This will give us more fuel. And then this will also give us more fuel and uh, pressure, so. But that's what's really cool about all these old things is simple things like this can shake an old truck and wake it up completely. And uh, it was only a hundred bucks too, so. We're gonna dig into this. These two should be a little bit more complicated. This is so simple, but um, both of these will take a little bit of effort, but still um, not too bad. really that just that tight wow fuel should have drained to the floor really yeah i just need a little bit i just so if there's any pressure in this thing get a bit wow okay here's the stock spring that came out honestly i don't i can't tell if this is any bit upgraded honestly by the looks of this and the feel of these i think this may very well be um the stock one all right so the three springs on the bottom are the new options the top one is the original um one or whether it's original or not the one that was in there you can see it's now shorter so it has um compressed a lot over these years and has definitely lost its strength so this will definitely give us improvement um, no matter which PSI spring we choose. So the black one is the highest rated spring, then it goes gold and silver is the lowest rated. Lowest rated being uh, 58 to 61, this is 62 to 65, and this is 67 to 70 PSI. Um, so we're gonna go with the black spring today. Honestly, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm just, because there's some stuff done to this, we got a bigger intercooler, bigger boost tubes. 
bigger injectors, all that. We're trying to get the most fuel, most optimized pressure. So um, I think we're gonna go with the 70 PSI spring. Um, if you have a different truck or you order one of the other kits, like I said, I got this from Riff Raff, but if you order any of the other kits, um, you might just get one spring or two springs or you might be able to get one spring option that gives you a lot of PSI or another spring option that gives you a little. Um, this Riff Raff kit gives you options. So we're gonna go with the biggest PSI um, which again is 67. Also, here are the two housings. This is the um, OEM one, they're known to crack. And then here's the new billet one. It's obviously, it's more beefy too, but um, this'll go in, um, in replacement of this. New O-ring there. And then we uh, clean this off, and this'll go back in the fuel bowl, and literally that simple. And like 20 some dollars or 20 to 50 dollars depending on what kit you get on the internet but that's pretty cool Okay, so in the instructions to do the um, CVD fitting and the banjo bolt, you gotta take the alternator off. Not really take it off, but at least move the whole bracket forward. Um, I thought it was gonna be a big project, really not. Super simple, we're already there. Um, your banjo bolt's hidden down there, quarter inch ratchet, and then moving this alternator bracket, um, careful, live power wire, but um, Gives you such easier access down here to the CVD fitting on this side. Um, and the other two um, for the back head um, are easier to reach from underneath the truck. So from here, um, we'll get this off and then our banjo bolt is down there. So we'll take that off um, here right now and then we'll do that. I don't even know where that squares up. Oh wow, that was like finger tight. It's pretty cool. It's probably gonna lose a bunch of fuel here. Um, you wanna grab me the new one? Here, now I get it. Well, I guess I could take it out. It shouldn't make that big of a mess. Sorry. <sighs> nice. Okay, so here's the two, here's the OEM banjo bolt. You can see how much fuel passes through that. And then here is the Riff Raff um, banjo bolt. High flow. It'll help us feed those injectors and um, give us that little extra power and stuff we need. But um, yeah, super simple. There's that. O-ring's already in it. Take this one out, put that one in. Here's the difference. You can see that screen. You can see right through that one. That's what you're kind of dealing with. Um, a lot of people go in there, drill them out, take them out, take that little, I think there's a snap ring, yeah, a little snap ring, gut them. You could do the same thing, or at this point in the installation, you could just take this and then put it back in instead of messing with this further. So that's what we're gonna do, reinstall this. Put that back on and uh, do the same thing in the back. Just can't see what I'm doing again. <sighs> oh yeah, no way, no way would you do this with the excuse me, with the uh, alternator in place. No way. Not even worth it. Not even worth it. Just take it off. 
Was that even an option? That's kind of what they said. There's no way. Just, yeah, just take it off. <sighs> just gotta make sure these don't leak. Okay, so the other banjo bolt is on the back of the um, passenger side head. I'm on it right now, same quarter inch ratchet. You can break it free just like this. It's right next to the down pipe. If you look at the riffraff instructions or whatever, I, if you look at the riffraff instructions, um, it'll show you exactly where it's at. But it's there, and I think we gotta get the other fitting from um, on top of the motor, but this one's easiest to access from underneath. And just like that, like I said, they're not, and they're too tight. So you can do that and spin it out with your hand. And get fuel all in your armpit. <laughs> it's in my armpit. It's I in. I see it tripping. Oh, that was oh. in my armpit. Oh no. <laughs> do you want to give me that other banjo bowl, honey? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> do you want some rags? Yeah. Do you need this piece yet? No. Thank you. I'm gonna be f***ing with this one for a minute, I can tell you that. <sighs> okay. Without dropping it. Okay, first things first, we were currently building a 7.3 um, and you got the downpipe off, the turbo off, or you're going to be doing the turbo, or you're going to be doing an exhaust, or you're going to be doing um, anything where everything's out, plenum, plenum gaskets, um, valve cover, pretty much where everything's out of the motor, do those mods. Because if I did that when I did like the whole turbo and the downpipe and all that, it would have made this so much simpler because you're not working in such a tight space. And honestly, for the front, if you're if you're just doing the CVD fittings and not the banjo bolts, there's an option to do that without taking the alternator off. And if you want me to be honest, buy all three of these things at the same exact time if you're doing anything else to your motor and put it all in while everything's apart and it'll make your life simpler. We're gonna fire this up now, check for leaks. People notice after these things are done are like a quieter idle, um, better throttle response, and um, obviously just running better in general. So three simple things, like a hundred some dollars, and not really that difficult. I mean, it did beat us up, but it um, it's not that bad. But let's fire it up and see, check for leaks, and then we can see how she's actually running.
It never did that before. Yeah, that throttle response was just not there before at all. Um, so if you guys remember, I bought a black 7.3 that I stole that this Lariat interior out of. When I drove that thing, and it was in way worse condition than this, um, the throttle was so like there. It was just there. But this was so like n n something was missing this entire time, and I'm hoping. Once we close this hood and take it outside, that's exactly what we've been missing, and this is about to be fun. Driving through that power band of just normal non wide open throttle, it just it's just more alive. That's that's crazy. I'm even blown away right now that those bolts, nuts, and fittings in a spring changed all this. That's crazy.
I I can't believe this. Whatsoever, honestly, that literally it was <laughs> it was two like CNC fittings, two billet fittings, two bolts, banjo bolts, and a fuel spring. And this thing actually has some nuts to it now. Um, I honestly looked in the rear view mirror after that and I didn't know but like this tire was spinning while I was rolling and I did not mean to do that because this truck never could. Um, that's why I'm just so blown away right now because that's incredible. I will say if you are going to do this, you do, you are building a 7.3, you have a 7.3 or you just got one and you want to look or you're looking to upgrade it. <laughs> uh, you just have to have to just make your life easier it's a hundred dollars in parts while it's all apart um do that do that save yourself time effort energy money and just a just a overall pain um if all that stuff was out of your way um or while you were doing everything else just knock those things out it'll definitely just wake up an oem truck with a bunch of miles on it because all that spring is worn out um those fittings also high flow um and and clearly they they, they <laughs> clearly they work for a hundred dollars they work you'll see throttle response the engine does run run quieter and much smoother um and it actually has a lot more power now well obviously i was missing out because i have the stage two injectors the bigger intercooler and all that but i was missing out because i just wasn't getting the right fuel pressure so if you guys are looking for a simple upgrade to your 7.3 or you're in the middle of building one and you're thinking about these pieces just buy it just do it you will not be disappointed okay so yesterday after we finished this up um drove it a little bit it's de it's definitely there now it's wide awake um we pulled it in here one thing i noticed even while driving it i thought it was just you know getting some air out of the system this thing has a little bit of a um like a hiccup at idle and did doing some research too high of a fuel pressure um, could cause that so we're actually going to take that black spring out and switch it with the gold spring which is the 65 psi which also should mass the match the fast and should be um pretty good for this truck i said it, run, it ran super well just a little bit of a hiccup at idle and doing some research seems to be too high of a fuel pressure can cause that swap that out real quick black to gold and this thing should be mint wow this is making my legs fall completely asleep uh. Okay, and then shortly after, spring swapped back down to 65 PSI. Let's try and start this thing, see how she uh, acts. 